Hello, everybody, and welcome to race number 10 of NASCAR Walmart Cup Series Season 2. I am Levi McIntyre, a.k.a. Thrashmaniac99, the voice of NASCAR Walmart Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Coca-Cola 500 at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. Of course, you know this is a three-mile oval track. That's a restrictor plate track, so we're going to see cars go really fast here at Coca-Cola, and we're going to see big ones like we've never seen them before. Last year, the winner of this race was Austin Weiner. Let's see if anybody new is going to win this race, as, ladies and gentlemen, here is the starting lineup for this race. That is a look at your starting lineup. The pace car is pulled in the pit road. Cody Lamas, your pole sitter, with Chase Oliver in second. <clears throat> and here we go. They're crossing the restart line. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys and girls. Already a couple cars are stepping down low. Annie Thomas, now Michael Norman. Dylan Thero was down low for a second. Three wide back here for the second spot, and Michael Norman's going to get the advantage on the inside line. Meanwhile, Cody Lamas got out to a, a pretty big lead at the moment, but that's not a good thing when it comes to plate tracks. If you're by yourself running and you got a lot of cars running in the draft, you're going to get freight trained. And they're already up to full speed around the 250 mile per hour mark. And it looks like Cody Lamas will lead the first lap here. And he will, and we are still green. <coughs> now with this track, they can go four wide, maybe five wide and keep it together. They just cannot be leaning on each other. Otherwise, a wreck will occur. And meanwhile, we got a battle for second between Michael Norman and Theo Stagall. And Theo's got that bottom line, but uh oh, look at back here. Three wide for fourth between Annie Thomas, Dylan Thero, and Hunter Bell, but now that's going to be ended by Annie Thomas falling a little bit to the back after getting caught up on the high line. But so far, Cody Lamas is still leading here, and now the lowest car on the inside is Gabe Williams in that 33 car, who nearly won Talladega last week. And now he's got another guy who nearly won. Oh, and Preston Lord, did he save it? Yes, he did. Wow, I thought we had the big one happen right there, but Preston Plord managed to save his car and is still running. However, he's holding up a couple cars. Now he gets turned right in front of Jekko Knight. And the caution's going to come out. Oh, but we had another wreck up ahead. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. We have a few cars that went upside down. All three of the Penske cars flipped over. Dylan Young, Austin Weiner, and Hunter Bell. But the caution is out. 
And Cody Lama still leads. Who else was in there? Oh, there's Tommy Mooney was involved. Sonny Hammond. I see Zachary Fitzwater, Jessica Sheldon, last week's winner at Talladega, PJ Williams, Dylan Young, Matt McIntyre, Austin Weiner, Sonny Hammond. Gabe Williams was in this, as too was Dylan Thero, Hunter Bell, Alex Hawkins, Annie Thomas, Preston Blord, Brody Talley, Michael Norman, and Seth Cole. Quite a lot of drivers involved. I see Ken Thero with damage. Justin Talampas, Parker Wright, Trent Dunham, who probably was a starter of this incident. Henrietta Fitzwater has damage. And uh, I see Alex Pedro has damage. So too does Rue McIntyre. But everybody else managed to get through and away from that accident. But man, oh man, that took out a lot of key contenders to who could have won this race but while we're under caution we're going to take a look at a replay as to what brought the caution out for the first time today here at coca-cola here's a look at it. it looks like trent dunham gets into some sheet metal contact with gabe williams they both go up to the inside and then they come up right in front of rue mcintyre theo uh, D uh dylan thero seth cole hunter bell and oh my that was a hard hit for the 33 of Gabe Williams. And there you see everybody just piles in. Oh, Kyle Matthews was involved. There's going to be quite a few on boards we're going to have to go here. And look at Hunter Bell. And wow, look, he flipped over his teammate. And that got him, his teammate Austin Weiner, to go upside down again. And then Dylan Young flipped. So we had all three of the Penske cars. Go for wild rides. Let's see how does Austin Weiner get into this accident. And he was the winner of this race a, a season ago. Let's see this hit he's going to give to the 33. Oh, my. And Michael Norman actually hopped up in the air for a split second. And then everybody just piled into this mess. And then Sheldon comes up into Dylan Young. Let's take a look at what happens with Gabe Williams. Because he was another car who came back up the racetrack and collected cars. He doesn't hit the inside wall, but when he comes up, oh, he's going to get Seth Cole and Hunter Bell. And that's how that portion started. But then, bam, a hard hit. And wow, look at the air that car got. I don't think anybody else hit him. After that, oh, Jessica Sheldon nearly got through, but she hits her teammate, Seth Cole. Now, there was another incident that took place that involved Preston Plord. Right as that uh, caution came out, as he was sideways, and he's going to come up into Jekko Knight, and he's going to go for a spin... He manages to save the car, but I know he gets involved in this uh, big one. But let's see, who does he hit to get involved? He doesn't hit Gabe Williams. Oh, he hit Annie Thomas. That's what happened. And then in the Dylan Young, and that's what got him flipping some more. There was Sheldon, Norman, Williams, Hawkins, Weiner, Thero. All of them piled in to this wad up mess now let's see jessica shelton come into this as she is right there barely gets seth cole she almost got through that and while wow, she got up in the dylan young and that's what got him up in the air and preston plord actually was airborne for a split second let's check out the uh, austin weiner vantage point of this uh, crash as uh, I'm actually uh, going a little bit further back okay here we go let's see when Weiner comes into this and right there into Gabe Williams and then he's gonna come up in the Hunter Bell and gets hit from Brody Talley and then right there from Kyle Matthews and PJ Williams and that's what got his car up in the air and he just started pirouetting the track and then right there as he got hit by Hunter Bell as he was barrel rolling. Weiner gets flipped over onto his roof. 
And that's what happens to the 12 car. But other than that, I think he only turned over at least once. Or a half a flip. But let's check out what happens to Hunter Bell and how he gets flipping. As he was already just spinning out of control. Let's see who's going to hit him. Oh, Zachary Fitzwater, and then Tommy Mooney as he was airborne. And then he barrel rolls over top of his teammate and Alex Hawkins. That was a pretty wild ride for the 22 car, who has been having a tough few weeks as he fell from the points lead, and he's actually in this race coming in 12th in points. But let's count the amount of barrel rolls he's going to take here. After this hit, he goes over... One, two, three, three and a half times Hunter Bell. And look up ahead, all of a sudden Kyle Matthews and Brody Talley get up in the air. I think that was just from when they came down to the, from the banking down into the apron. And wow, Matt McIntyre went airborne. Ian Dutta was involved. So many cars got into this mess. Oh, Matt McIntyre was on his side and on two wheels for a second. Hits the wall. And he's just all wobbly and every which way possible. But let's see Dylan Young. How does he come into this incident? He was running right behind Annie Thomas as this took place. Let's see. He's going to hit somebody. Oh, Annie Thomas after she hit Dylan Thero. And Dylan was just sliding and spinning. And then right there when she got when he got hit from uh, Jessica Shelton, that's what got his car flipping. And he's going to go over one, two, three times it looks like. Three flips the two car takes. We're going to go through quite a few on boards. We're going to go on board with the two, the 12, the 22, the four, and the 33. On board with Dylan Young as there you see the wreck takes place. Man, tough break for Dylan Young who's had a tough few weeks. On board with Jessica Sheldon as there you see the wreck takes place right there. Bam and bam. And wow. Right there when Preston Blord gets into it. On board with Gabe Williams who is one of the starters of this incident. Right there he gets hooked from Trent Dunham. And then he's going to come back right into the 41. And then right there, the hit from the 12. Man. And now on board with Hunter Bell, and this should be a wild ride. Wow, rough ride for that 22 car. On board with Austin Weiner. Right there to hit to the 33 and then he's just getting spun out of control and he goes up in the air and then pirouettes and then right there when Hunter Bell, is, he was flipping, gets into his teammate and that's what got him upside down. But that was a look at all the onboards. Let's now take you to the restart. Well, after that accident, we have over half of the field out of the race. And they are Rue McIntyre, Ken Thero, Trent Dunham, Sonny Hammond, Hunter Bell, uh, Dylan Thero, Alex Hawkins, Brody Talley, Gabe Williams, Preston Blord, uh, Annie Thomas, Michael Norman, Seth Cole, Austin Weiner, Ian Dutta, Dylan Young, Tommy Mooney, Jessica Sheldon, B.J. Williams, Barney Taylor, Zachary Fitzwater, 
and Matt McIntyre. Those are the cars out of the race, but let's check and make sure if the 28 is in those cars are still on track. No, the 28 is out. What about the 9? He's out, and then the 1, he's out. So everybody from 21st on back are out of the race. Your leader is still Cody Lamas. Second is Joshua Collard. Third is Sam Young. Fourth is Theo Stegall. Fifth is Ryan Anderson Jr. Four rookies in the top five at the moment. Then it's Chase Oliver. Sixth. Seventh is Charles Jackson. Eighth, Chris Washer. Ninth, Eric Burden. Tenth is Danny Wells. Then it's Austin Talley, Justin Talampas, Parker Wright, Jekko Knight, Mason Bromer, Alex Pedro, Betty Johnson, David Rivera, Henrietta Fitzwater, and Kyle Matthews. Those are the cars who are left on the racetrack. We'll see how these cars are going to run now that pretty much low over half of the field is out of the race after that massive wreck. 22 cars out of the race and about 24 to 25 cars were involved. That was arguably the biggest wreck we have ever had in a race. But here we go. Green flag is back out. Cody Lamas is leading, but Joshua Collard is right on his tail. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Cody Lamas is pulled away from Collard, but Collard's got Sam Young, Theo Stegall, and now Theo Stegall is going underneath of Sam Young for the third spot. So now there's other cars coming into the fray. There you see Charles Jackson, Chase Oliver coming in. And now Ch Chase Oliver is going to try to go underneath of Sam Young for the second spot. He's not going to be able to get at least at the moment. He has a draft partner in Theo Stegall right behind him. But there you see Ryan Anderson Jr. with Eric Burton pushing him. Let's see what Chase Oliver's got under his sleeve as he's coming right behind Cody Lamas. Wasn't able to get underneath him quick enough to get around him, but now here comes Ryan Anderson Jr. Underneath of Eric Burton and Sam Young. Now up ahead, Chase Oliver. He's got the inside, and it looks like he might be able to get around Cody Lamas for the lead. First lead change of the race. And it's going to be Chase Oliver who gets it. And we are still green flag racing. However, the pack has been separated to two cars. Justin Talampa is coming down pit road. And we got a couple cars running in the back of the pack. Meanwhile, there is Ryan Anderson Jr. running in second, and he's underneath of Chase Oliver. He's going to try to get the lead, and Charles Jackson's right behind this battle, lurking in the shadows. Theo Segal coming into the fray, as to Joshua Collard, and now here comes Charles Jackson to the bottom to try to get the lead for himself. Now, you got to wonder, when will these cars have to come down pit road, because... During that last caution, nobody came down pit road. And they are a few laps away from the halfway point of the race. So it tells you these drivers will end up having to make at least one pit stop, if not two pit stops. But now Chase Oliver coming back to the bottom to try to regain the lead. And Ryan Anderson Jr. was rubbing against the wall. But now Chase Oliver has taken the lead back from Charles Jackson. But now Joshua Collard looking to make a move. And Mason Bromer's coming down pit road. Could this be the first uh, green flag stops? I see a bunch of cars. Chris Washer, Alex Pedro, Kyle Matthews, David Rivera, and Betty Johnson all coming down pit road. I think based on that, we might have only one pit stop, possibly two, because towards the end, who knows how much gas they can save. And they are only two laps away from the halfway point of this race. When they come to the stripe, it will be one lap. But now, 
Here comes everybody else to pit road. The leaders are coming down to make their pit stops. We're going to keep an eye on the 21 as he came down as the leader. So far, he's going to be able to get into his stall safely since no other cars are around him. He's got the second pit stall. Let's see what strategy he's going with. Is he going to go with only two tires and fuel? No, he's going to go with all fours. All four tires and fuel. Let's see if he's going to be able to get out first, and it looks like he will. Though Charles Jackson is right there, and actually he beat Chase Oliver out of the pits. And Charles Jackson now coming back onto the racetrack. But who knows if he's going to stay as the leader after all this. Let's see who was last scored as the leader. They were saying Chase Oliver was scored the last time around as the leader, but clearly Charles Jackson is right in front of him. So at the moment, Charles Jackson would be the leader. Unless there were some cars who got around him which I don't think anybody did, so I think Charles Jackson, after those pit stops, he is your leader. And now they are at the halfway point of the race, and yes, Charles Jackson is the leader. <coughs> well, since we haven't had a caution in a while... Let's now take a look at uh, the field as they run at the moment. You got Charles Jackson as the leader. Second is Chase Oliver. Third is Austin Talley. Fourth, Mason Bromer, who is the points leader coming in the, into this race. Fifth is Sam Young. Sixth is Jekko Knight. Seventh, Joshua Collard. Eighth, Danny Wells. Ninth, Chris Washer. 10th is Eric Burton, 11th Cody Lamas, 12th Ryan Anderson Jr., 13th Parker Wright, 14th Alex Pedro, 15th was Kyle Matthews, now it's Theo Stagall, 17th is Henrietta Fitzwater, 18th Justin Talampas, 19th David Rivera, and then rounding out the field and the last car on the lead lap is Betty Johnson. Trying to figure out where Jackson and Johnson's running. Johnson's running on the back stretch, and uh, Charles Jackson's getting ready to head to the start finish line. But now here comes Chase Oliver to try to get the lead back. And Chase Oliver's now the leader. And now look who else is coming up here rookie Austin Talley. And now he is underneath of Charles Jackson for the second spot. Who knows if the ADA will have anything. And the caution flag is out. Oh, Ryan Anderson Jr. involved. I believe he was the only car in an incident. I think he spun and got caught on the part of the track between the racetrack and the apron. But I think he's going to be able to finish, but... Still, that is a tough break for that uh, eight, for that uh, 51 car. But Chase Oliver will be your leader. Let's see when they come around the pit road area if they're going to come down for another pit stop to top off on fuel to make it the rest of the way or not. I would hope they would, so that way they can finish the race. So far, it doesn't look like anybody else is coming down, but we'll see how this is going to play out. And 
And it looks like they are coming down pit road to top off on fuel. So this was the last pit stop they're going to have for the day. But who is going to come out first is the question. Let's check up ahead. There's Ryan Anderson Jr. still in his pit stall after getting spun. We'll take a look at a replay as to what happened to the 51 here in just a little, here in just a moment. We're going to check first to see who is going to come out of the pits as the leader. But Ryan Anderson Jr. is going to end up going to lap down. Looks like Chase Oliver is going to come out of the pits as the leader. So Chase Oliver will restart as your leader. Let's now take a look at the replay as to see what brought the caution out for the second time here at Coca-Cola. Here's a look at it. Ryan Anderson got sandwiched in between two Michael Waltrip cars, Cody Lamas and Eric Burden, and he gets up in the Eric Burden. They both go touching the outside wall, and then Ryan Anderson's going to go for a spin down the apron, sliding on his side as everybody was coming by and then right there he comes back up the track and then he tries to drive it away but he's gonna get stuck in between the apron and the racetrack so and because of that he had to get teleported into pit road but I think he's going to be able to finish the race because there's really no visible damage on that 51 car so I believe Ryan Anderson Jr. is going to be able to finish the race, but he ain't going to be able to contend for the win, which is a tough break for that 51 car. He was running 10th at the moment. But that is a look at what brought the caution out for the second time. Let's now take you to the restart. Well, after that uh, caution, the 51 of Ryan Anderson Jr. is going to be restarting two laps down. Or is he still in pit road let's check the 51 now he's out on the track but he's two laps down so that is a tough tough break for the 51 car but fortunately he's going to be able to keep finishing this race but unfortunately not the win but chase oliver is going to restart as your leader second is charles jackson and look at this third is danny wells we have not talked about him all day long. He's running up here in the third spot. Fourth is Austin Talley. Fifth, Joshua Collard. Sixth, Sam Young. Seventh, Jekko Knight. Eighth, Chris Washer. Ninth is Mason Bromer. Tenth, Eric Burton. Then it's Parker Wright. Henrietta Fitzwater. Kyle Matthews. Cody Lamas. David Rivera. Alex Pedro. Justin Talampas. Theo Stegall. And Betty Johnson, the rest of the cars on the lead lap, and then the two lap down car of Ryan Anderson Jr. But let's see if Chase Oliver is going to be able to hold off other veterans like Charles Jackson and Danny Wells, who are running right behind him, if he's going to be able to win this race and get his first win of the season and his third or his first win of the season and his third career win. We'll see what's going to happen with this. And when they restart, it's going to be six to go here at Coca-Cola. And here we go. The green flag is back out here at Coca-Cola. And already Charles Jackson's diving to the inside to try to get the lead already. And Danny Wells is going to follow... Charles Jackson's path as to his Joshua Collard. So Chase Oliver's going to get kept out to around the fourth spot. Charles Jackson's got the lead, but now here comes Wells, Collard, and Sam Young to the bottom. But now here comes Collard to the inside of Wells, so it's going to be three wide for the lead. <clears throat> and it looks like Joshua Collard's going to get it. But now here comes Sam Young with Chris Washer, Mason Bromer, and Parker Wright running behind him. But now here comes Chris Washer to the bottom with Mason Bromer behind him. And Collard's going to lead that lap, and it's five to go here at Coca-Cola. 
And Chris Washer's got the inside line, but now here comes points leader and regular and rookie points, Mason Bromer to the bottom. He wants to try to get his first win of the season, but now here comes Parker Wright to the bottom. And right behind him is hungry competitor Eric Burton, who has managed to avoid... Oh, and Sam Young gets spun! We got another big wreck. There's Collard, Sam Young, Chris Washer. I think those were the only cars involved. Oh, Cody Lamas, Chase Oliver get involved. And then Betty Johnson as well. Man, oh man, and the caution is out. Parker Wright is your leader. If we manage to go green, it's going to be a one-lap shootout as it's four to go here at Coca-Cola. This is going to be hard to tell. I think if we don't go green, Parker Wright is going to be your winner. But let's take a look at a replay as to what brought the caution out for the third time here at Coca-Cola. Here's a look at it, and it looks like Sam Young... It's going to come up in the Chris Washer, and then Collard gets held up behind us, and then Austin Talley gets involved. But then up ahead, we see Chris, or Chase Oliver's running a little slow. And it looked like, oh, Cody Lamas just hit the apron, and it got him all wobbly. Let's see. Yeah, he touches the apron, and he loses control of his car, and he's going to come up in the Chase Oliver. And he's going to take himself and Chase out of contention for the win if we manage to go green or not. And then right there, Betty Johnson hits Cody Lamas in the rear and causes herself to blow her motor motor out. But that is a tough break for some of these guys who are hoping to win. But we're going to now take you to what could be our final restart of the race if we do go green. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to go green, so it looks like this race is going to be official, and Parker Wright, the rookie out of Stuart Haas Racing, is going to be the winner of this race. Kind of a shame we didn't manage to go green for at least a one-lap shootout, but the timing of that caution was just not the right time, it seemed. <coughs> but... Still, we had a good race nonetheless, I can say. And Parker Wright is looking to be officially be the winner of this race as they are just now coming off of turn four down the backstretch. But let's take a look at the list of cars who ended up getting uh, lapped down or out of the race after that accident. Sam Young and... Chris Washer and Betty Johnson, but let's double check, make sure if they were out or not. No Sam Young is still there. What about Chris Washer? Washer is out. Now what about, I know Betty Johnson is out for sure, but yeah, she is officially out. So we ended the race with only 17 cars finishing, 16 on the lead lap here at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. And they're getting ready to leave turn four to take the checkered flag in this 26 lap event here at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. And they are now coming off of turn four. So coming to the start finish line, it is going to be official. The rookie in the number 14 Bass Pro Shop Chevy from Stuart Haas Racing, rookie Parker Wright, is going to win the Coca-Cola 500 at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. And everybody has just now crossed the start-finish line, so now we can take a look at the official results. Parker Wright is going to win the Coca-Cola 500 here at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. Great run for him. This could be a useful tool for him to get a potential wildcard spot if he can't get into the top 10 in points later on. But we'll see how the rest of the season will go until the chase. Eric Burden, once again, so close to getting that win that he's been long waiting for. But he's going to come away with second. Great run for him. Rookie points leader and regular points leader Mason Bromer gets third. And it looks like he's going to stay the points leader. Great run of third for him. Danny Wells is going to get fourth. This is going to be helpful to him in the point standings. Great run for him. And then Charles Jackson, who is one of the front runners of the race, he's going to come with a 
come away with a fifth place finish. Six is going to go to Jekko Knight. Great run for him. Theo Stegall, great run of seven for him. Alex Pedro, even after getting in that big one at the beginning of the race, <laughs> excuse me, he is still going to come away with an eighth place finish. Ninth, even after getting spun and up against the wall, Austin Talley is going to come away with a ninth place finish. And then rounding out the top ten is going to be rookie Justin Talampas. Great run for him. And then the rest of the cars who finished on the lead lap, Kyle Matthews, David Rivera, Henrietta Fitzwater, Chase Oliver, Joshua Collard, and Cody Lamas. 18th, who was the last car to finish, was Ryan Anderson Jr. And actually also uh, Sam Young in 17th. So 18 cars finished the race, 16 on the lead lap. Everybody else from 19th on back are out, we're out of the race. Chris Washer, Betty Johnson, Rue McIntyre, Ken Thero, Trent Dunham, Sonny Hammond, Hunter Bell, Dylan Thero, Alex Hawkins, Brody Talley, Gabe Williams, Preston Blord, Annie Thomas, Michael Norman, Seth Cole, Austin Weiner, Ian Dutta, Dylan Young, Tommy Mooney, uh, Jessica Sheldon, PJ Williams, Barney Taylor, Zachary Fitzwater, and Matt McIntyre. But anyways, that is a look at your official results. We'll show you the results one more time along with the rookie points and regular points. But the next race we are going to be running is going to be at Texas for the running of the Texas 500. And then we have the Southern 500 at Darlington. And then we have All-Star Race Weekend coming up. But anyways, guys, here is your results, rookie points and regular point standings. Thank you for checking out the Coca-Cola 500 at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. See you at Texas.